Dear chairpersons, dear colleagues, on behalf of the Enzema Trialist Group, it's my pleasure to present you the patient's reported outcome data regarding the persistent impact of axillary surgery on arm and breast symptoms in early breast cancer. The Enzema trial was designed for evaluation of de-escalation in axillary surgery. Previous studies have shown a high local local regional control rate even without axillary lymph node dissection. Despite increasing evidence, a sentinel lymph node biopsy alone and axillary lymph node dissection remain parts of breast cancer treatment guidelines. With the introduction of screening programs, we see more uh, patients with smaller tumors and node negative disease. Systemic treatment is more individualized according to tumor biology. Therefore, there is an ongoing need for ongoing re-evaluation of standard local therapy. Quality of life considerations are the primary motivations for a bending sentinel node biopsy. The Enzema trial is a multicentric prospective randomized trial consisting of two randomization, first one, second one. In, first, in a first randomization, patients were, were allocated to no sentinel biopsy or sentinel biopsy in a manner one, two, four. Main inclusion criteria uh, were clinically node negative, invasive breast cancer up to five centimeter, plant, plant breast cancer is conserving surgery, and postoperative irradiation of the breast. Patients with a near adjuvant systemic treatment were excluded. Micrometastasis were evaluated as negative sentinel. In a second randomization, patients with one to three involved lymph nodes by macrometastasis were allocated to sentinel node biopsy alone. That means no further surgery or completion axillary lymph node dissection. One of the objectives of the trial were the comparison uh, of invasive disease-free survival between no axillary surgery uh, and sentinel node biopsy, as well between sentinel node biopsy and uh, completion axillary lymph node dissection. One of the secondary objective was quality of life. This is the topic of my presentation. Patient reported outcomes were assessed at baseline, that means before surgery, and at 1, 3, 6, 12, uh, and 18 months after final axillary surgery. Therefore, the EORTC uh, quality of life questionnaire C30 and its breast cancer module BR23 were used. Higher scores indicate better functioning and quality of life or worse symptom severity. A score difference of five or more points um, was considered as a clinically meaningful uh, difference. Statistically, the quality of life scores were analyzed using repeated measures of mixed effects models leading to p-values for treatment arms and over time and for the interaction term treatment by time. Whole breast irradiation was mandatory for all patients. Uh, I want to point out that ipsilateral axillary region was not included in the clinical target volume. In total, 5,502 patients were recruited in randomization one. Of them, 348 patients dropped out due to different reasons, most of them because of R1 resection and mastectomy. Finally, 5,154 patients uh, were randomized in the ITT set to no sentinel or sentinel node biopsy. 3,565 3, patients had a 
negative sentinel or only micrometastasis, only 12 patients had four or more involved lymph nodes. Uh, this is an extremely low rate for this pop population. Patients with one to three uh, affected lymph node were randomized in a second step to sentinel node biopsy alone. That means no further surgery or completion axillary lymph node dissection. 40 patients were directly randomized to the second uh, step. For first as well second randomization, both treatment arms were well balanced regarding age, tumor size, grading, um, tumor type, and other tumor characteristics. As you can see, most patients had uh, small tumors, grading one, two tumors, were hormone receptor positive and uh, HER2 negative. This is indicating that the whole study population is a low risk cohort. Questionnaire completion response remained high throughout the trial. For RANDO1, at baseline, quality of life data were available from more than 91%, uh, and even after 18 months, uh, for more than 71%. Also for RANDOM2, the completion rate was around 60% after 18 months, and again, there were no significant differences between treatment arms regarding response rate over time. Now you will see the results. For patients with no sentinel biopsy, the green curves, and sentinel no biopsy, the pink curves, no meaningful, that means five or more points differences exist regarding global health status, physical, role, and emotional functioning, because of the high case numbers, some small differences reach statistically uh, significance, but these differences were not meaningful. The same is seen for cognitive and social functioning and body image. Significant differences exist for breast and arm symptoms, sc uh, scores favoring the no sentinel biopsy uh, group. However, these differences were clinically meaningful only for arm symptoms. For patients of the second randomization, no relevant differences exist for global health status, functional scales, and body image scales uh, between completion axillary lymph node dissection and sentinel node biopsy groups, there were significant and clinically meaningful differences only for arm symptoms, uh, scores favoring the sentinel node biopsy group compared to the completion axillary lymph node group uh, represented by the red curve. The next three slides consider arm symptoms separately for RANDO1 on the left side and the second randomization of the right side. Meaningful lower pain and arm or shoulder score favorize no sentinel biopsy compared to sentinel node biopsy and sentinel biopsy alone compared to completion axillary lymph node dissection. As is expected, the biggest differences were observed directly after surgery. However, as you can see very nicely, the differences uh, are persistent over the complete follow-up uh, period of 18 months. The same advantage was seen for no sentinel biopsy, respectively sentinel node biopsy for arm and hand swelling. The lymph edema scores for patients or of patients with um, complete axillary lymph node dissection are slightly increasing over time. And finally, limited arm mobility score. Again, the data favor favorize no sentinel biopsy and sentinel biopsy alone. In contrast to previous two slides, you can see differences during the first six months and 
are narrowing of the curves after six months, especially for the second uh, randomization. Finally, our conclusion. In Zema is with more than 5,000 included uh, patients, one of the first and biggest randomized trials investigating the omission of sentinel node biopsy in clinically uh, node negative patients and first to report quality of life data. First randomization showed that patients with no sentinel node biopsy had improved breast and arm symptoms compared to those with sentinel node biopsy. It is very important that all the detected differences for pain, arm swelling, and mobility persist during the complete follow-up period. In a second randomization, patients in a sentinel node biopsy group had improved arm symptoms and functioning compared to those receiving completion axillary lymph node dissection. The main differences were seen for arm and hand swelling. No relevant differences in other quality of life scales were seen. Uh, outcome data are expected to be shown by the end of 2024. I'd like to thank all patients and their families, all participating sites and the IDMC. Our special thanks goes to the German Cancer Aid for funding this trial. Thank you so much for your attention.